have to look back at Revelation 14. I appreciate it. Thank you. But I'd have to look back at Revelation 14 and see exactly what it about exactly what it's talking about. Uh, you got to understand, a lot of that revelation, although it came from the Sibylline oracles and, and, and through the filter of Serenthus, it was not written by John on the Isle of Patmos. That, that was straight. That's an invention of Rome. But just like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are inventions of Rome. Only thing, The only thing I put my stamp of approval on are the actual words of Jesus. That's it. He, and to me, he's the word. He, he, is, he is exactly what he claimed to be. But none of those other attachments are in the historical record. None of the dozen or so ancient first century authors that we have comport with any of that story whatsoever. Uh, even the Apostle Paul, who wrote 13 books in the New Testament, does not cite a single miracle of Jesus. And it's because the church invented all that. Yeah, I, I believe that inside the construct, yes, the word was made flesh. And inside the construct, the word taught, traveled from country to country, did all these things. And this is why, and this is why all these mythological attachments were later added. They do not appear in the original text. They do not appear. As a matter of fact, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John don't even appear in the historical record until after the fall of Jerusalem. It's after the Jews begin their diaspora spreading all over the world because the Romans are trying to exterminate them. Do we all of a sudden have all these religious texts that are trying to pull in the Europeans, trying to pull in so that all these miracles are, are, are given significance? And because the early churches were all Greek churches, they're all Greek cities, the seven churches the seven churches of Christianity, if you look up at their geographical locations, they're all Greek cities, every single one of them. Rome's not one of those cities of the, uh, of the seven churches. So it's uh, this is why the New Testament was written in Greek. It was the international language of the time. But, uh, well, it was the former international language of the time, older. Latin was, was taking over. But yeah, I, don't, I believe he's the word made flesh. And I believe that not just like the scripture says that nothing will be taken, not nothing will be altered in his word. Not one jot, one tittle, however it says it, will be removed. And I agree with that. I don't believe AIX has the power to remove the word. But we were never given guarantees. As a matter of fact, we were also warned in the prophetic literature that there would be many things added. And that's, how, and that's exactly what I believe believe happened. The gospel of Marcion was the oldest gospel, not a single miracle, no virgin birth, no crucifixion. It was all about a holy man entering, entering into Samaria and, and Palestine. And this holy man, his words and his teachings and his parables were spiritual and they were life changing. And there wasn't a single miracle he performed. He wasn't involved in any miracles. His life wasn't in a miracle. What was miraculous were his teachings, what he said. This is in the Gospel of Marcion. It's older than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So all these mythological attachments were done by the church. But yeah, the word made flesh. He walked among us 100%. I'm on board with that. I'm on board with that.